FedEx stock, ticker symbol FTX. Did you know that this stock is up 44% year to date? Well, I didn't, until recently somebody told me so. From a dividend point of view, things look pretty interesting with dividend yield at almost 2%. And take a look at the 5 year growth rate, almost 24%, which is an insane number. On the 20th of June, FedEx presented quarter results where they beat on EPS but missed on revenue. For the upcoming earnings, almost all analysis voted a miss, which is very interesting. Could this be the perfect moment to buy FedEx stock? Well, I'm very excited to see what you guys think about this stock, so please let me know your thoughts in the comments. My name is Thomas and this is Thomas Invest. I'm an investor looking for great stocks at great prices. So what does FedEx do? FedEx provides customers and business worldwide with a broad portfolio of transportation, e-commerce and business services. If we dive in the most recent earnings result, we see that revenue was reported at 21.9 billion, down 10% year over year. But take a look at the operating income, down 21% year over year, which is a big decline. EPS is down 28% year over year, which is also not looking that good. But be aware, this is also happening at UPS. Revenue was or is slowing down because of multiple reasons, and not so much because of the company performance alone. FedEx is progressing on cost reduction plan, where they see a 2 billion year over year reduction in operating costs, which is of course a good thing. And if we take a look at the revenue segment breakdown, we see that FedEx Express is by far the biggest segment and down 13% year over year. Volume decline most pronounced in the US and international export volumes are down as well. FedEx ground is down only 2%, which is very interesting. The revenue decline is driven by lower volume, partially offset by an increase in yields. FedEx freight is down most with 18%, but this is also the smallest segment in revenue but still keep an eye on this segment. And if we take a look at the operating income, we see that the ground segment sees a 18% increase year over year, which is very nice. The express segment sees a 47% decline in operating income, which worries me a lot, since this was the biggest segment. The freight segment is down 26% year over year, which is also worrying me a lot. In terms of revenue, this was a really small segment, but in terms of operating income, it did a pretty significant amount. And FedEx expects that volume will continue to decline in the coming months, which is of course concerning me a bit. However, for the full year outlook, FedEx expects to see a flat to low single digit growth in revenue, and an EPS of $16.5 to $18.5. And most interesting, FedEx is lowering capital intensity to give stockholders a higher return. Most recent dividend increase of 10% is just the beginning. And now that we know more about the company, it's time to check the fundamentals of this stock. But first, if you made it this far into the video, I want to thank you a lot for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to receive multiple analysis every week. And also join my Discord channel for free to meet other people within the community and to talk about stocks. It's completely free so don't miss it out. Let's continue with diving into the fundamentals. FedEx is a 65 billion market cap company. PE ratio is at 16, which could indicate that they are undervalued right now. Later in this video I will show you my 3 price targets for FedEx stock. So make sure to watch until the end, because PE ratio is only telling a small part of the full story here. Revenue is at 19 billion, and in this graph we see that revenue went up kinda nice and steady. However, most recently revenue started to decrease, which is something that is happening industry wide right now. We see the same thing happening at UPS. Over a longer period of time, margins are going up and down quite a bit. It is always in the range of 2 to 6%, and to be honest, to me it's a bit on the low side. I would prefer a 8 to 10% profit margin. EPS is also going up and down quite a bit, following the margin and revenue, so keep an eye on this number as well. Analysis expect a decline of roughly 27% in EPS in 2023, which of course hurts to see big time. 
However, after 2023, they expect to see double digit growth up to 20%, which is very nice. For the revenue, it is pretty similar pattern with a decline in 2023. But after that, revenue is going up to mid single digits, which is fine in my opinion. It is a massive company and together with UPS, they are the market leader. So there is not much growth in terms of revenue. Return on assets is sitting at 2.2%, which is a bit of a disappointing number. Return on equity looks really good, but the most important number, return on invested capital, is sitting at 5.5%, which is also a bit of a disappointing number, especially since it's lower than the 5 year average of 6.3%. Current ratio is at 1.37, which looks pretty good to me. Over a longer period of time, it is really steady and even decreasing, which is not a bad thing. Total debt is sitting at 38 billion, and I prefer companies that can pay down at least a third of the total debt with the total cash position. Right now, total cash is sitting at roughly 6.8 billion, so they can't pay down a big chunk of their total debt, which is something that I don't like, of course. So it's very important that free cash flow is growing, since this is used to pay down debt, of course but also to buy back shares, pay dividends and all other things. And here we see that free cash flow is going up in the long run, but it is really not steady and consistent. So again, keep an eye on this number as well. A thing that I love about this company are the shares outstanding. It is going down in the long run. It means when shares outstanding are decreasing, it increases your ownership in the company. Increases the EPS, lowers the PE ratio, and makes it easier to maintain and increase the dividends. And since we're talking about dividends anyways, dividend yield is sitting at 2%, which is a decent number. Annual payout is a little bit over $5, and payout ratio is at 31%. I prefer 50% or lower, so right now they have 69% left in cash to buy back shares, pay down debt, do acquisitions, and a lot of things. The 5 year growth rate is at almost 24%, which is a great number. On top of that, they increased the dividends for 2 years in a row. And if you take a look at these numbers, the dividends paid since 2010, you see that FedEx really likes to increase the dividends, which is very nice. But in 2020, they didn't increase the dividends, so the track record is gone. And that's the reason why you only see 2 years of dividend growth in the previous sheet. Payout ratio is a very important metric with dividends. It tells you if the dividends are safe. And here we see that over a longer period of time, payout ratio is increasing, which is something that I don't like. But 13% is still a great number for the payout ratio. And in this graph we see the expected dividends in 2024, 2025 and 2026. Of course this is an estimation and can be highly impacted by results, but it gives you a rough indication. It's expected to grow at historical growth numbers, which is very nice. Overall, these dividends look pretty good to me, but how about the historical returns? I decided to compare FedEx stock with the overall market, in this case the S&P 500. Next to that I added their main competitor, which is UPS. On the 5 year chart we see that FedEx underperformed the S&P 500 with only 19% including dividends versus 75% for the S&P 500. UPS has beaten both FedEx and the S&P 500 with a 98% return. On the one year chart it looks pretty different with FedEx returning almost 23% versus the S&P 500 returning almost 21%. UPS has a 7% return. On the 6 month chart it's pretty much the same story again. FedEx is beating the S&P 500 and UPS by a significant amount. On the one month chart it is again FedEx that is having the highest return with 12%. Both UPS and the S&P 500 are seeing low to mid single digits return. So bottom line FedEx was beaten in the long run by both the S&P 500 and UPS, but started to create some momentum most recently. So is FedEx stock a buy at current prices? Well, let's check the three price targets that are created using the Everything Money software, which is one of the best tools out there. I'm using a low, mid and high assumption to get the three price targets, starting off with revenue growth. For the revenue growth I'm filling in 0, 2 and 4%, based on historical performance, their own outlook, but also because of the analysis. 
for the profit margin I'm filling in 3.5, 4.5 and 5.5%. And for the free cash flow margin I'm putting in 2.5, 3.5 and 4.5%. For the PE ratio and the price to free cash flow I'm filling in 16, 18 and 20. It's one of the industry leading company that is still capable of growing, but I don't want to overpay for the growth. My desired annual return is 12.5%, since I can get an easy 10% average annual return with owning an ETF. Right now, FedEx stock is at $255. I hit analyze, and we only see one green number. We have a low price target of $90 to $126, which is a big drop from the current stock price. We have a mid-price target of $154 to $198, which is still a big drop from the current stock price. And we have a high price target of $244 to $298. To me, the mid-price target is the most justified here, indicating that the stock is overvalued. My final conclusion on this stock is that in my opinion, we missed the boat. Earlier this year I would have said that the stock was undervalued, but right now it is looking really expensive for the minimal growth you get back in return. But that doesn't mean the stock price isn't going up anymore. In my opinion it's overvalued, but we will see what happens with the stock. For the upcoming earnings, analysis are folding a big miss which is very interesting. So I can't wait to see what is going to happen. For now it looks like a decent dividend play. But from a value point of view, I don't see it. I'm skipping this stock and will continue to look for better deals out there. And remember to always do your own research and never fully trust on what I or other YouTubers say about the stock. I'm not a financial advisor and this content is just for entertaining purposes only. I hope you liked this video and I did bring some insights of the company to you. I'd really appreciate a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel to receive multiple analysis every week. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video.